What is up, Rad Potential YouTube, and welcome to today's Rad Formational video about rotary engines. We are going to be talking about in play today, the importance of it, and how you set it and check it, and then also why it changes when you may rebuild your engine. So, first things first, in play, what is it? End play is your eccentric shaft's ability to move about its rotational axis forward and backwards, okay? Like so, as I am moving this one. Okay, now, this is with no in play spacers. There's nothing in here to restrict this, so this is about how much it moves with nothing on the front and nothing on the back. If yours does not move that much when you're building your engine, it might take a little force, but in my tap it back and forth, but you might have a problem if you don't have that much in play already. Something else is going on. And no, you can't put a 13BE shaft in a 12A. It won't, it won't fit. Just it won't fit. Okay. Regardless, that is how much in play you got there. In order to, I guess, control in play, right? If your in play is too small, i.e. it's locked together, what's going to happen is you're going to burn up the face of all your bearings in here, okay? You're gonna burn up these little Torrington bearings, which I'll show you in a second, okay? If it's too tight. Now in a piston engine, you're gonna have a thrust washer, a thrust washer washer. And what that's gonna do is set the end play of the crankshaft, okay? Now, end play as Mazda wants you to have, right here, this is the book, the red book of secrets that I mentioned and all this stuff. I'll link the video and put the PDF in the description. This book shows right here, standard end play, 0 0.04, 0 0.07 millimeters, 0 0.0016, 0 0.0028 inches, okay? Now, I generally make sure all my engines are pretty dang close and within that spec, 100%. Now, do I target a tighter or a looser end play? No, I'm generally just hitting that spec, okay? Trying to be within there. For Mazdas, unlike a thrust washer, crush washer, something like that, they run these in-place spacers, okay? Which we're gonna talk a little tech and then we'll move over here. But the in-place spacers have letters on them, all right? The letter denotes the thickness of the spacer. On this page, you can see here, L, M, N, X, Y, V, Z. And then if you go on to Mazda Tricks' website, this list keeps going. You can get thicker spacers yet. And no, they're not really in alphabetical order, I don't think, but that's how you denote the spacer. So I have a few sitting here. So we'll see, we got a, what's this one? A V, we got a Y, we got an S, we got an X. This brand new one is a T. Okay, why, if you're building engines, should you have a bunch of in-play spacers on hand? Well, when you build an engine, and this is how in-play can change, not over the life of your particular engine, maybe, but when you rebuild it, okay? In-play, imagine, right, is a distance between here and here on your E-shaft, okay? Allowing it to move a little bit. When you rebuild your engine, say you switch out a housing, well, that housing might be microscopically thicker or thinner than the housing you had in here before. Both housings might be thicker or thinner. That center iron you broke might be thicker or thinner. So anytime you replace an iron or a housing in your engine, the in play could change. Anytime you replace any of these, the front pulley, the timing uh, gear, your oil pump gear, your front counterweight, anytime you replace like this little washer here, okay? That is a time where your in play could change. You might need to reset it, all right? Now, the order of operations of the front of your engine, okay? I've got this nice S413B E-shaft chilling here and I'm gonna show you how to put all this stuff together by taking it apart. Front pulley comes off, okay? Chilling. Timing gear comes off. Make sure the chamfer side goes towards the engine. All right. If you don't do that, your timing will be off. Oil pump drive gear comes off. The counterweight comes off the front. All right. This is where things get tricky. 
Inside the counterweight, there's a washer. Most of the time, they always stay in here. If you're doing a quick rebuild, you don't necessarily have to take it out, but if you put it back together, make sure you get some oil and stuff in there just so that's not locked up, all right? Next, you have your first of two Torrington bearings. So you're gonna take this out. They're not directional. Now, this plate right here is gonna come off, but it's gonna be bolted to the front stationary gear, just like that, okay? So everything we took off up to the plates point will come off without removing the plate. Then you're gonna take this plate off, okay? So right here, takes the plate off. Next, you'll have another Torrington bearing and then the spacer comes out and the washer that fits on the front of your eccentric shaft comes out. Okay, so in reverse. Washer, put the spacer on. Put your Torrington bearing on, it goes over the spacer. Then you will take this, goes on the front of your engine, bolt that down. So that goes on here, just like that. That leaves a little ledge here. You're going to put the next Torrington bearing on. It is very, 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 very important that this Torrington bearing gets on top of that spacer, okay? It can't be like this. If you put it on like this, see how there's a gap? When you start putting the rest of this stuff on and you torque that baby down to 58 Ugga Duggas, you're gonna ruin that Torrington bearing, you're not gonna have any in play, and you're gonna have to get a new one. So make sure that this Torrington bearing sits up on that spacer, okay? Not that, getting ahead of ourselves. Put the counterweight back on. This, 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 okay. That's how the front piece gets assembled. Now, I'm gonna put all this together on this engine right here for you to kind of illustrate how it reduces the end play, okay? So let me go ahead, throw some stuff. And did I put this on my hand? Yeah, okay. So I don't have this block completely bolted together. It's got two tension bolts in it. It's just chilling. All right, nothing too crazy going on here. But you can see the end play, right? Go ahead and pull the parts off of this one. No, this is not predetermined. I have no idea how much this is gonna go. This washer, the little chamfered beveled edge needs to fit on the beveled edge of your E-shaft. So put that down. Then you're gonna put your Torrington bearing on, or not the Torrington bearing. We're gonna put the spacer on. Torrington bearing goes on over the spacer. Next, this deal. There's some little dowels it has to line up with. Okay, so get the dowels lined up. I'm gonna throw this one bolt in here for now. Oh, that's definitely too short of a bolt. Cool. Handy. All right, next, the next Torrington bearing. This deal, counterweight, oil ring goes like this with the gear facing the engine. Oh, come on. Then you've got timing gear, chamfered edge towards the engine. Slide that dude on there. Put your front gear on there. Yes, there is a keyway in here. I don't have the keyway in there for the sake of the video, okay? Oh, come on. This crank might have some run out. All right, there we go. Okay, now you'll see there is, well, the whole iron's coming apart, but little to no in play, right? So I can move it because that bolt's a little loose, but you get the picture. That's how that fits together, okay? Take this off, take pressure off of it, etc. You get all your in play back, right? So the reason that putting a thicker spacer in there gives you, see now that Torrington bearing fell out and it won't go back together. The reason that a thicker spacer gives you more in play, okay, is because what a thicker spacer is doing is creating more of a gap between this whole front assembly being tightened down on that spacer, it creates a bigger gap for this to wiggle back and forth. You put a smaller spacer in there, all of that stuff now slides further down the E-shaft, making your in play less, okay? Easy peasy, right? Super easy to understand. Now, we're gonna move over to this engine, which is the 
Series 4 Turbo 2 engine block that I had in my rotary truck for a long time. Not really a long time, but a year or so, which is pretty long for me. And I have my in plate checker set up right here. Okay, this is a standard magnetic base. Put it on something strong, it won't stick to the front cover, so you got to put it on the, the front iron. Usually the coolant passage works great. I check my in play with the front cover off, okay? It usually helps to have the flywheel on because it'll help pull the assembly down, so whenever we pry up on it, it'll pop back and forth. You'll see here in a second. But I usually do it with the front cover off, without the keyway on, and I check all of that before I seal the front cover because you might have to change the spacer, right? This one, I know it's good. It was good when we built it, whatever. Magnetic base, dial indicator right here. I put the dial indicator on the nut. Don't put it on the pulley. You can do this on the back as well. Check it from the flywheel side, which is fine. Don't put it on the pulley. The pulley itself will flex when you pry it up and down. The nut will not, okay? I've got it zeroed, which is not a huge deal, but you at least need to know where the dial is. That you can watch it, okay? And what you're going to do, and I'll pry on this, and you guys watch from the camera, you're going to see this thing move a little bit less than two dashes. See that? So that's my in play, okay? One dash is equal to zero, zero, one, zero. That's what one whole tick mark is worth on here, okay? You see right there, 0 0.001. So by this moving two of those dashes, okay, that means we have 0 0.0020 inches of in play. All right, so this one is within spec. Now, if, say, this red, 0 0.0014, or it was 0 0.001, closer to the one bar side of things versus two bars, okay? you would need to put a thicker in-play spacer in. So if your in-play was a Z spacer, right, and you had 8.00, and you were that much off, you would want to go up to a V spacer to be 8.02, which would make that that much bigger. And I guess these are increments of uh, 0.0004 inches, right? So if we were at 0.0011, 0.0014, which is outside the range, we would want to go one size thicker spacer, which would put us at 0 0.0018, right? Increase of 0 0.004. So just be careful when you're doing your math. The spacers are actually pretty cheap. So if you're going to be checking your in-place, say it's too tight, maybe order two spacers at a time, okay, instead of paying shipping for the whole deal. Sometimes you may grab this if you don't have the flywheel on, click it like that, and it may stay there. Then you can push this back down, okay? When you have the whole setup on the front of the motor, it typically works best to pry under the counterweight. Okay? So, with all that being said, that is how to check your in play in your rotary engine. If you have any questions, drop it in the comments below. Love to try to help. If you're interested or have any detailed questions and want a uh, a very good response, easy access to me. Any rotary questions about your build, this, that, and the other, or if you just want to support the channel, head over to the Rad Potential Patreon over there. It's a perfect place. I make specific videos just for the patrons addressing things, questions that they have, and that is a much smaller community. It's way easier for me to interact with you on a more personal level. And I appreciate all of your guys, all of the patrons over there's support currently. With that, if you like the race car, do you like the rotary stuff, you want to learn more about rotary engines, subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the very next video. Keep it red. Buddy! It's pouring down rain, and my dog's not afraid of rain. Can I get a high five? Oh, good job. Peace, guys.